Hey everyone and welcome back to Smart Life. I kept postponing buying a vibration sensor because I wasn't sure it had a strong purpose. Often people use it on washing machines to tell if the cycle is on or off, but honestly, if you have a smart plug with power and metering options, that's a more reliable way to detect the start and the finish of such a device. Where this sensor shines though, is on glass and surfaces. For example, on windows for security, if someone is breaking the window to get in the house, the door and window sensor won't trigger an alarm, but the vibration sensor will do it. Then you can use it on other things like doors, drawers, garage tilts, mailbox. This is an interesting use case, having a vibration sensor on the mailbox so you don't check for mail every day. So as you can see, these are just a few triggers this sensor can be used for. Tell me in the comments, where would you use it for? Enough said, so let's check out the Cara T1 vibration sensor. Let's start with a short description. So this tiny little Zigbee sensor detects vibration, tilt and drops. It uses a CR2032 battery. It has an adjustable sensitivity. You can adjust this to high, medium and low. You can set this in the Caro app. You will need an Acara hub to do so or in Home Assistant via Zigbee to MQTT or ZHA. To connect to third party ecosystems like Apple Home or Google Home, you will need the Acara hub. As for Home Assistant via ZHA or Zigbee to MQTT, no Acara hub required. It comes with batteries included. Ok, so let's add the sensor in the Acara app and then into Home Assistant. So you just open the Acara app, go to Accessories, press this plus button on the right hand side here, Add Accessory. And there's two options from here, you can either scan the QR code on the sensor or you can scroll down in the sensor section, scroll down and there it is, the Vibration T1 sensor. From this point I have two Acara hubs, one is my front doorbell and one is my M2 hub. In case you don't have a hub, this won't work, so you need an Acara hub for this. In my case I'm gonna use the hub M2 and now you need to press the pairing button on your uh, Acara sensor until the lights blink. You should give it a name that we know where to find it. So in my case, I'm gonna use it for the front door and press OK. I'm gonna use the living room as an area. Click Next and done. Now the uh, vibration sensor, it's all set up in the Acara app. Next I will show you how to add it to Home Assistant, there are two options here, you can either use it uh, straight from the hub which is linked to Home Assistant as I will use it or you can add it to ZHA or Zigbee to MQTT. Now well, let's take a quick look in the Cara app to see what options are available for this sensor. So when you open the device you'll see the trigger count down here and you have the triple tap option. So let's go for the uh, trigger count, showing how many times vibration or movement was detected. In my case, you can see it recorded quite a few triggers through the day. Now let's head back. Uh, this triple tap shows you how many times you tap on the sensor. Now let's go find the settings option. We go here on the three dots in the right hand side. And here we have the device settings. We have two options here, sensitivity adjustment. You can set this to low, medium or high, depending on how sensitive you want the sensor to be. Then if we go back, you have the reporting interval, which controls how often the sensor reports activity. You can set it to 1 second, 5 seconds, 10 seconds, as you wish. Now going back, you can also see the, uh, the Zigbee signal quality. In my case it's acceptable. Then you find the firmware update, you see what version you have, and you can configure automations directly from the app. So overall the Cara app gives you some useful information and settings, but it would have been nice to also see the tilt and drop entities exposed. Now, let's add the vibration sensor to Home Assistant. Head on to Settings, Devices and Services, Add Integration, Add the Zigbee device, press the button, keep holding on the button until the light blinks and then it should pop up in here. There it is. Now wait until the interview is complete and it's configured, then we need to give it a name. So there it is. Uh, just give it a name so you know where to find it and that is it. When integrated into Home Assistant with the Cara M2 Hub, the device can also be found as a HomeKit accessory. So head on to HomeKit and you should find your sensor right here. The basic entities are exposed, vibration sensor, battery sensor and identify and it works well. However, I was expecting that since it's visible in the Cara app and HomeKit, it would also include the tilt and drop entities, but it doesn't. Let's move on to see more fun use cases for this vibration sensor. 
Uh, let's see for what can we use it for. So I thought of a few fun ideas. Let me know in the comments below what you think of them. So number one, as a garage tilt, you can mount it on your garage door and it can tell you if it's fully closed or halfway open. Might be interesting. Number two, you can use it as a smart bed sensor or basic sleep tracker. Attach it under the bed frame and it can act like a motion detector, detecting when you get in or out of bed. Might be interesting, might be not. Let me know in the comments. Number three, door knock detector. I have tested this. I will tell you the results a bit later in this video. It should work great for doors without a smart doorbell. It can trigger a sound or send a notification when someone knocks. Even if you already have a doorbell, it's useful since people often knock anyway. Number four, exercise or fitness equipment. You can place it on a treadmill or an indoor bike. It can track when it's in use or trigger lights or music while you work out. This I think is good. And you can use it as an earthquake or tremor alert. It's not a replacement for proper sensor, but it can detect unusual shaking indoors. While testing the device, I noticed an issue with the ZHA integration for the Kara T1 vibration sensor. It doesn't expose any sensor entities even after reconfiguring it. So for me, ZHA for a Kara T1 vibration sensor just doesn't work properly. I don't have a Zigbee 2MQTT coordinator yet, but from what I've read in Zigbee MQTT, the sensor pairs instantly and exposes vibration, tilt and drop entities, plus sensitivity controls, which sounds much better. So if any of you are using Zigbee MQTT, let me know in the comments what entities do you actually get from the sensor. Do you see the tilt or the drop? Let me know in the comments. I also did a quick test, I placed the sensor on the inside of my front door to see if it could detect the knocking. Unfortunately, it did not pick up at all. Even the sensitivity set to high, it only reacts to stronger movements, like when the door is actually opened and closed, that works well, but not the light knocks. So if you are thinking of using it as a door knock detector, it probably won't work reliably unless the door shakes quite a bit. Now let's do a review of the Kara T1. Uh, vibration sensor. So let's talk honestly. Is the Kara T1 vibration sensor actually worth the extra money? Can you get a cheaper version of a vibration sensor and get maybe better results? I'm not sure because I don't have another uh, vibration sensor. So please let me know in the comments below if you do use one, what brand do you use and how it works and if it works well. In my testing the Kara didn't work very well with ZHA, the sensor gets detected but no useful entities are exposed, not even vibration or tilt. So for home assistant users on ZHA, it's a basically a no-go. With the Kara M2 hub, it connects fine and stays stable, the connection is solid, it has no dropouts, but inside home assistant, you still don't get access to the tilt or drop entities, only basic vibration and battery level. In the Okara app though, it performs as expected. You can view trigger history, adjust sensitivity, low, medium or high, and tweak the reporting interval. So if you plan to use it within the Okara ecosystem, it's perfectly fine. If you're using Zigbee 2MQTT and it actually exposes the tilt and drop entities as some user report, then that changes things. In that case, it becomes a solid option, especially given how stable the connection is. Let me know in the comments if you use Zigbee 2MQTT and have an Akara T1 vibration sensor, how does that work out? Does this uh, tilt and drop entities are exposed? Let me know in the comments. But based on my tests with ZHA and the Akara hub, it's more of a works well in the app, limited in the home assistant type of device. So if this helped, hit the like button, that will help me a lot. Please subscribe and drop your best vibration sensor use cases in the comments below. Thank you, until next time.